Hi, welcome to Ideas Box. I'm Jimmy and today's video is about our fire system pump. We live in a remote location and our house is on an unsealed road which borders a national park. Our house is pretty much surrounded by farmland and native forest and it's in our interest to prepare for a bushfire. I believe in the US they're called wildfires. When we bought our place about nine years ago, we fitted a sprinkler system which I have been slowly improving. In this video, I explain a few things about our fire pump, the rooftop sprinklers, and test the system out. Anyway, let's get into it. We live in a beautiful location. The house is kind of surrounded by scrub. Not actually quite as bad as it looks. The scrub goes about 200 meters that direction. And then it opens up into grassland, which is a sheep station. That way it extends a bit further. That's north in that direction. So, on the roof of our house we have a sprinkler system just to wet their garden surrounds and to keep water in the gutters so that if a fire comes through the embers don't set fire to the leaves. Now, you can see what the state of the water is like. That's what, what it's like in summer, which is when we need the um, fire pump to be running. Now, originally, years ago, I had decided I'd put it over there and then just run an underground line up to the house to run the sprinklers. But after the first summer, we hadn't actually put the pump in place. But after the first summer, when we realized we lose most of the water out of the dam, and anything that's down there is likely to get sucked up into the um, pump anywho, uh, we figured we're better off to go to a tank system, which we have got. This is the sort of weather we get a lot in anything other than summer. We can get this for a week, a day, uh, and then we can get weeks of um, nice clear weather, but we do get a lot of this, this kind of weather, and the problem with it is, is that it drifts around, and it can get a meter into your workshop through the door, it can get, um, if you've got the, gar the roller door open on the garage, it can get all the way into the garage, and it can get lots of things wet that really you think would otherwise be under cover because it's, um, it's like a swirling, low cloud, sea fog, drizzle. And the wind blows it around, so yeah, it can be a real issue around here. So things that are left out really need to be protected from the weather in a proper shed, uh, a closed up door shed. An open front shed doesn't really help that much around here. Having said that, it's a lovely part of the world to live in. It just, um, yeah, it's like everywhere else, it's got its drawbacks. So this is the little shed that it lives in. Excuse the junk, we try to keep it down but it's difficult. And you can see that it's kind of not completely closed in. And because of the amount of drizzly and foggy weather we get down here in winter, the fog's just been getting in under here and under there and it's just been um, affecting the motor so and affecting the pump. So I've decided every year and now I'm going to take it in at the end of summer and uh, clean it up and store out of the weather. This pump I used to leave out in the little shed that it, it lives in and um, what I've done the last couple of years is over winter I've brought it in, cleaned it all up, give it a spray of WD-40. This year I re-sprayed the tank and part of the engine cover. Here let me show you that. I re-sprayed the engine cover and around the starter switch because it's got an electric start which is pretty nice. I re-sprayed the tank. I think everything else was pretty good. I just cleaned it all up, gave that a bit of a wire brush. So the plan is now, every winter, I'll bring it in, clean it up, put it in here just under cover so it doesn't get too dusty, and um, put it back in place in the start of fire season, which this year, because we're having a bit of a dry, we had a dry winter, this year fire season is going to start on the 15th of November. It normally starts on the 1st of December. But as you can see from the fires in Queensland and around the state, it, it, uh, we might be in for a bad year this year. So let's put that in place and we'll see how that looks. I've taken the O-ring off this Filmac fitting because it's cracked, look. So I'll whack a new O-ring on there. And I'll give everything a spray of leak tester, but it's really just for the soapy water to lubricate everything so it goes together a little bit better. So you start it as per the instructions and you set the throttle. I haven't put a mark there yet, but I probably should put a mark about there because that's about where we want it, just above idle. And there's your choke and your fuel and everything and your starter switch. So 
yeah that's it that's so let's start that up and see how it goes This system is intended to be used in conjunction with the aluminium roller shutters fitted to every window on the house to protect the house in the event of what's known as an ember attack. This is when it starts raining embers well ahead of the actual fire front. The plan is to roll down the shutters, start the fire pump, which can wet the roof, gutters and about 5 metres around the house for about an hour and a half, then get away to a safer area. As I mentioned earlier, our road borders a national park and it's one way in, one way out. So we have to make the decision pretty early in the piece. We don't actually plan to stay and fight the fire, but if we can't get out, we figure we may as well give it a try. So we've set up the system as best we can to do that. The sprinklers tend to spit and fart a little bit the first time we start it each year because it's got to push the air out of about, I don't know, about 80 metres of three quarter inch line. So the second time we start it up, the sprinkler head starts spinning pretty much straight away. Here it looks like the sprinklers are not rotating very fast, but it's just the shutter speed matching the speed of rotation of the actual sprinkler heads themselves. So I'll probably put another one, I think on the corner of this veranda here, just to wet this area here. Yep. And then I'll, put, I'll move that other one to the front of the other, the veranda at the front as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to test the fire hose. Okay. So I've pulled this valve out and replaced the O-ring that goes between these two sections and the O-ring that goes between these two sections and also the O-ring on that shaft there because that valve's quite old. Now these valves in Australia are, I don't know, like 30, 40 bucks. But get on eBay, get yourself one of these O-ring kits because these big ones here are the internal seals for the inch and a quarter Filmac valves. Um, that one there is the shaft seal for the tap handle for the valve and these ones here are the ones that go in on these ochre coloured fittings in here. The insert that goes between the pipe and the threaded fitting. So these $30 seals, 20, I don't know, $28, $30 seal kits can save you hundreds because I reckon I've rebuilt two or three of those valves and I've definitely used half a dozen seals on this size fitting here so as well as other things they can save you a fortune you get on eBay and uh, just get yourself one of these $30 kits. When we first set up our rooftop sprinklers we used these sprinkler heads here which are fine they're very, they're very good sprinkler heads but the pump couldn't really spin these very well. You had to have the pump running flat out so I was using more water and more fuel to get these brass ones to spin so we went to these nylon ones which spin at the drop of a hat and they spin much easier so you're using less water less fuel and achieving the same result which means we can run the pump for longer. Now people have said to me aren't you worried that the nylon will melt? Well to be honest if the fire gets that close then all hope is lost, the house will be gone. So we don't worry too much about that. It it'll, will either happen or it won't. To run the water around the house, we've simply used 19 mil irrigation pipe, the poly pipe, which goes to the, just goes along the roof to the sprinklers. And people have said to me, only worried that the poly pipe will melt. My answer to that is it's sheltered from the radiant heat by the gutter. It's got cold water flowing through it. So I think if that melts, then we're in a lot more trouble than just trying to keep the 
trying to stop the house from catching on fire from a bushfire attack. So anyway, that's the system I've got. We've had it for eight or nine years now and thankfully we haven't had to use it. In the country fire service, when we roll up a lay flat hose, we lie it out like that with a bend up here and the two ends about the same. If you want the outside, if you want the longer one that goes on the outside so it sort of curves around and they end up about the same length. We also have a hose winder on the side of the trucks and I've made one and this is how they work. The hose winder itself basically consists of a tube that this piece here goes into. So it rotates on that and then you can hook the hose over either of them, doesn't really matter. So you hook the lay flat hose on there and then wind it using this hand here to hold it so that it stacks fairly straight. Here I'll show you how that works now. Then you give it a quarter of a turn back and then it should come off of there not too bad. There we go. So there's the hose rolled up. Fairly tidy. Sometimes it takes a bit of practice to get the, the ends the same but that's okay like it is. That'll be fine. So I'll stash that away now. Ready for bushfire season. I've got four of them and I'll get them all ready to go. I'll have them just near the fire pump outlet and um, yeah, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like, subscribe, and that notification bell. And if you've got any questions or comments, put them in the comments section below. All right, well, I guess that's it for today. Thanks a lot and bye for now.